Well, the first thing to recognize in human-earth relationships is the Earth is primary, humans are derivatives. Humans are for the perfection of the Earth rather than the Earth here for the perfection of humans. And everything in the universe is ultimately for the perfection of the universe. So, uh, humans give to the universe a consciousness of itself. In fact, in a certain sense, humans are the way in which the universe uh, creates itself, because the human can be defined as that being in whom the universe reflects on and celebrates itself in a special mode of conscious self-awareness. So, in this manner, this uh, first thing to recognize is that humans are integral, must become integral with the earth. They, uh, this is a very uh, new approach to the Western world who have been so transfixed with the glory of the human and with the rights of humans uh, that uh, they have missed the point as regards humans and the relationship with the earth. We might uh, summarize our present human situation by the simple statement that in the uh, 20th century, the glory of the human has become the desolation of the earth. And now, the desolation of the earth is becoming the destiny of the human. From here on, the primary judgment of all human institutions, professions, and programs and activities will be determined by the extent to which they inhibit, ignore, or foster a mutually enhancing human-earth relationship. When we part just how this will work out with the various aspects of our human existence, we might select four major areas that have authority over the human project. The political social order, the educational order, the economic order, and the religious order. Now these four uh, projects are all directly involved in this uh, determination of the future. Religion has an awful lot to do with it if they would simply begin to be more aware of the revelatory significance of the natural world. The education is such that children need to have contact with the uh, natural life systems. As someone has written a book uh, about the uh, children and their need for their just simply emotional mental development to have contact with the mountains, with the air, the sea, with the dawn, the sunset, the trees, the birds, the song of the birds. Uh, children that don't have these experiences have no real idea of the world they live in. They begin to live in a, in a house, in a school, in a city that's all manufactured. And they begin to be progressively isolated from the basic dynamics of what human life is all about. So, and that is a very clear situation. There is, it has been uh, suggested that this lack of contact leads to a nature deficit disorder for children. So, in this manner, the the future of the children depend very directly on some more functional balance between the human 
presence and the natural functioning of the natural world. Economics. We need to uh, return to some sense of, of the natural life systems and uh, realize that our disturbance of the earth and our pollution uh, processes are having a profound contact on the economy of our world. And then we have also in the political order, and the political order, the most absurd thing in modern times is the idea that only humans have rights. Uh, that's the most uh, absurd and self-destructive thing imaginable because every being has rights. Rights come from existence. Rights is of the, uh, simply the giving to every being its due. That's a brief definition of rights. And every being to exist uh, has rights, has three rights. The right to be, the right to habitat, and the right to fulfill its role in the great community of existence. So, in this manner, a person has a, a very direct and immediate way of thinking about the 21st century. Because we will, if we don't respond to this by a better adjustment of human earth, a presence to each other, then we're in difficulty.